Thank you very much as we welcome you live inside a sold out Gregory Gymnasium as Wells Fargo presents Texas Volleyball, the rematch between the number two Stanford Cardinal and the number three Texas Longhorns looking for some payback at home after losing on Tuesday in Palo Alto. Three sets to none. The crowd was lined up about 90 minutes before. This is going to be a really fun rematch with all sorts of implications. And we've got star power, as you might expect. The reigning National Player of the Year, Catherine Plummer, wearing number two in the black clad Stanford Cardinal. With my partner, Nell Fortner, I'm Paul Sunderland. Stanford at seven and one, their only loss at BYU. Texas at five and two. Their only other loss besides Stanford was at Wisconsin. Set to go, Sydney Wilson will start things off. Breon Butler. Breon Butler, six foot four, red shirt freshman out of Kendleton, Texas, had 11 kills on 22 swings on Tuesday night, and she was the talk of Stanford's practice earlier this afternoon. Overpass. Tap down, Yasmin Vidart Ani. Very rare mistake by Stanford. This is an excellent Cardinal passing team, so we're not going to see many uh, mistakes like that. But Yazzie Vidart Ani takes full advantage of it. Here is the freshman Libero, Sydney Peterson, 5 4 out of Dyke, Iowa. And one of Texas's be better servers, and they really struggled with that serve in Palo Alto, 14 service eras. Tight pass again. Beautiful sprawl by Shook to keep the ball alive for Texas. Plummer again into the cross court. And that's a shot we're going to see a lot of tonight, Paul. You can have two, two blockers up and ready and waiting. And Catherine Plummer has such a variety of hitting skills, but she cuts that corner as well as anybody in the country. I know it's very early, but that was a dig by Texas. They did not get a kill out of it. That ratio is really important. Outside again to Plummer, who changes direction after a beautiful dig by the white-clad Libero. Morgan Hentz wearing number nine, 5'9 junior out of Lakeside Park, Kentucky. There is Morgan Hentz, last year's Libero of the Year in the Pac-12 Conference, and uh, I think unquestioned the best defensive player in the country. Really plays ahead of the game from talking to Kevin Hambly from Stanford. She just sees the game so well. All-American setter Jenna Gray on to serve. She had four aces on Tuesday. Stuff block on the outside, Alade along with Plummer. Well, that shows you how tough a blocker Catherine Plummer is. I mean, that set had to travel a long way to get to the right side to Yazzie, but Stanford gets two blockers on it. The Dardani had a facial administered on that stuff block. Gray again. A little bit of confusion. Once again, Texas does not get a swing. Right side, ball set too tight. A rare location error for the All-American setter Jenna Gray and Adriana Fitzmorris, number 12 in black, missed that ball out of bounds. You know, Paul knows Stanford's been in some big games, but this is a really good Texas crowd. They're loud, they're into the match, and maybe Stanford has a little bit of jitters right now. We're seeing some uncanny mistakes. Here is Claire Hunt on the serve and play some defense. Good block once again by who else? Six foot six, Catherine Plummer, and she'll go back to serve. Plummer out of Aliso Niguel, California, already a two time first team All American. It's really impressive watching her play, the way she's able to jump, move with her six six frame. An ace serve down the line for Plummer. 15 kills, three aces on Tuesday night. Catherine Plummer. Had right knee surgery last April 8th, missed most of spring practice, but was able to come back and spend a lot of time with the team when they went on a long European trip in June. Shank pass here in Texas having some problems with serve receive. 
Well, I really like where Stanford is serving right now, down that right line. It makes it harder for Ashley Shook to get to the ball and be able to really use all three positions along the net. McClure able to tuck that ball down inside, and Stanford off to a quick start, leading 7-3. Serving already a story with Plummer and Jenna Gray, as it was on Tuesday night. More on that when we come back to the rematch here at a sold-out Gregory Gymnasium. Stanford ranked at number two on top of Texas, 7-3. Texas Volleyball on Longhorn Network is presented by Wells Fargo. Established 1852, re-established 2018, and in part by the Mizuno Lone Star Classic, the largest USA Volleyball Girls National Qualifier, April 2019, in Dallas, Texas, and ZipRecruiter, official job site sponsor of Texas Athletics. Brian, come on, follow through. Let's go. Thanks, coach. Get those dogs rolling. Get them rolling, rolling. Okay, coach. Well, guys, I think I'm gonna go all, I'm gonna fold. SPF 60, way to go, really good job. Hey, Joe, do you wanna try some of my homemade guacamole? It needs more salt. It does need more salt. I'll be bringing my own tonight. Nothing's gonna stop me now This whole place is gonna be mine I'm gonna run this song Work presents the Tex Men. And a record for Ricky Williams runs to the Hall of Fame. Shipley in zone ahead, folks. Touchdown, Longhorns. There comes Griffin. That's an interception. Moves the end zone. Touchdown. The Tex Men unite Saturday on LHN. Just like on Tuesday night, Stanford out to a very, very quick start, up 7-4. to four. Stanford led 8-0 in the opening set at Palo Alto. Again, that was a match won by Kevin Hambley, Stanford Cardinal. Three sets to none. Here is Micaiah White for the first time. Boy, McClure is solid in serve receive, wearing number four in black. Honorable mention All-American Tammy Alade, the 6'2 senior out of Alberta, Canada, with a kill. Yeah, and this is what good passing does. Look, Jenna Gray doesn't even have to move in order to get that ball. That's a pass that you call a three pass, a perfect pass. You can use all positions along the net. The Stanford block is really exceptional right now. A first look at Holly Campbell, the 6'4 freshman from right here in Austin. And this is a player, big shoes to fill. She has to come in and, and really play big minutes. They moved Adriana Fitzmorris to the right side. Holly Campbell filling in in the middle. Stanford working on McKay White. She's been passing the ball pretty well. Campbell again. Stanford now on a 10-2 run and leading 10-4 here in the opening set. Best three out of five. And what are we seeing Stanford do? They're passing well, so they're running their middles right there. Texas has to find an answer with, to that with their block. That's going to be a net violation and a break for the Texas Longhorns who needed a side out. Let's take a look at our impact players presented by the 2019 Mizuno All-Star Classic. We are looking at, at All-Americans, Morgan Hens and Jenna Gray. That's a Libro and a setter for Stanford. Excellent players. And then Brianna Butler and Mikaela White. These are all four of these players have to be impactful tonight for their teams. 
Megan McClure with a big rip out of the backcourt last year. McClure, as an outside hitter at six feet, started as a freshman. She was known mostly for her passing, her ball control, filled that role very nicely. This year, averaging almost three kills per set and hitting 295. Yeah, much more consistent this year. That year under her belt has made a huge difference. Breon Butler again tattooing the sideline. That, that was absolutely a beautiful swing right there by Breon Butler. You got to get the ball up high enough for her to get on top of it. But look at how she can cut it down in front of the 10 meter line. This is why Kevin Hamlin talks so highly of Breon Butler. Ball tantalizing on the top of the tape but stays on the Texas side. Service error. We'll keep track of those. McClure will go back to the line. Stanford leading 12 6. You know, and that's the frustrating thing about where the, the timing of the missed serve. You have a beautiful swing by Breon Butler, then the missed serve. Good dig by McClure right to Plummer. Peterson keeping the ball alive for Ted. Boy, that is really a good set to the outside. Butler again, no. The dart on knee, the timing not there. What a good contact by Micaiah White. Well, both teams working hard to keep the balls alive. But right here, Yazzie Bedard on knee, getting a couple of good swings. But you see Texas fighting hard to keep the ball alive, but she ends up with the kill at the end of the play. Here is freshman Logan Eggleston on to serve for the first time. Plummer! by Texas. This will give your freshman middle blocker a lot of confidence. She shows how long, how active she is. Hands up, Yazzie sets the, the edge right there and they get the block. On the slide, nicely done, number three, Kate Formico, defensive specialist, 5'9", sophomore out of Saratoga, coming on with a perfect pass. You know, we don't see Stanford hit a lot of slides right here, but they hit that one to go down for serve, Campbell. Serve receive is so important. Right now, McClure has received five serves, all of them perfect passes. <laughs> Off the noggin that time of Alade, Mikaia White sneaking the ball through. And that's what we're used to seeing. Mikaia White going up and really swinging hard, taking advantage of the arms of the Stanford block for the, for the point. Sometimes she gets a little tentative with those shots, but she's got to swing hard tonight. Plummer into the cross court right on the sideline. The libero for Texas Peterson thought that it was going to be wide. She has so many different swings, Paul. She can, she can cut it, and she can cut it sharper than that in front of the 10-meter line, but she's such a smart player. Both teams pretty good in serve receive right now. Hans has got it up. And Plummer with the kill. Yeah, Captain Plummer continuing to, to just show the different off-speed shots that she has. Oh, what a shot by Hens. Again, laying it out there for her teammates and Plummer finishing it. A handful of players in the country have the ability to make that play. Hardly any had the same kind of ability to read the game that Morgan Hens does. She was on the move before that ball was even tipped. Mikaia White comes right back with a kill. That's what makes it so much fun to watch her play. You know, these Libros have a different mindset. They're just, they're crazy. They don't mind getting hit. They're just, they're a little bit crazy out there, but she will lay it on the floor every, every time to get the ball up for her hitters. That's the first team All-American from last year. There were three of them on this Stanford team. And remember, all of them as freshmen, along with Inky Ajanaku won the national championship over the Texas Longhorns in Columbus, Ohio, back in 2016. Stanford right now hitting 286, Texas hitting 136. Nobody home, some real confusion there. 
And McClure quickly off the block and out of it. What happened on that play for Texas in their serve receive? Well, I'm not sure who Ashley Shook was setting to because she's only got two hitters along the front row right now. Stanford is so efficient, you cannot give them free opportunities. Well, oh, Morgan Johnson slipped to the floor, so that was supposed to be a slide, but she was to the court here at Gregory Gym and McClure, and Stanford took full advantage. Yeah, that was unfortunate for Texas because the, the ball was a definitely a playable ball that should laid out there for Johnson. One of the biggest factors for any volleyball team's success is your ability to pass the ball effectively and perfectly. And this is how we're going to keep track, and this is how it's graded by the coaches. Show us a perfect pass now. Well, let me get my... There we go. Perfect pass is three. Two options, pass off the net, and then a crummy pass where the setter's got to run all over the place is a one. And then you add all those up, the total number of serve, receive, opportunities and you get an average 2.2 2.3 is excellent and you want to have about 55 percent passes right here right this there. is the key to happiness right here the telestrator doesn't like me as much as it <laughs> likes you that's the key to happiness and right now both teams passing the ball pretty well particularly stanford i look down at their chart and they're all threes except for a couple of early aces the side out percentage right now though Paul Texas not being able to take advantage of good side out numbers for themselves they're getting some 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 balls up they need to be able to put them away coach Jared Elliott just used his second time out in his 18th year 27 and 3 last year perfect 16 and 0 in the big 12 and there is his counterpart Kevin Hamley Second year at Stanford, eight very successful years in building the program for the Fighting Illini. Took Illinois to their only NCAA, I shouldn't say only, took them to their last NCAA semifinal in 2011 when he was the national coach of the year. Service error here by Plummer, still big comfortable lead opening set by Stanford, 17-11. <laughs> going to be a net violation boy Texas is getting a lot of good looks but a lot of tips on slides and other sets Stanford is just going to gobble that stuff up yeah that one right there though was placed nicely by Johnson I don't think Stanford would have picked that one up but the net definitely um, took that call away and that ball drifts out of bounds once again the serving story was huge on Tuesday night not only serve received but also in the first meeting Stanford had a season high nine aces and seven errors Texas had four aces and 14 errors and some of those 14 errors came at the worst possible moment for a Texas fan what a good block McClure working on the outside with Campbell you know you can tell that Stanford's really put some time in at going against this Texas slide Blockers are there, they're ready. The press in, just really nice technique right there by Stanford. Fifth stuff block already for the Cardinals. Plummer out of the back row after another beautiful dig by Morgan Hintz will continue to serve. You know, Paul, today at, at serve pass, Morgan Hintz at the end of the practice, she is digging balls one-on-one -on -one with hitters with no block up. I'm like, is that not crazy? You're going to get in front of Catherine Plummer, and she wants it. <laughs> but it tells you, it shows you the work that, that Lee Rose put in, especially Morgan Hintz, and being able to dig hard-hit balls. That's craziness, though. That was craziness. <laughs> Stanford on a 5-2 run. Remember, earlier they went on a big run as well to establish this lead. Boy, that was really a good set to the outside, but that play by Shook too tight to the net Stanford scores 19 and a half points per set that's the highest in the country and so the margin for error on the other side of the net with respect to net violations balls hit out of bounds balls served out of bounds is very very slight you score points on your own side kills stuff blocks and aces Morgan Johnson big lead for Stanford opening set Fitzmorris 
I'll tell you, they got to get off McClure. She is passing absolutely lights out. A perfect seven for seven in terms of receptions and perfect passes. Look at that. Yeah. And, and not that tough of a serve. It didn't no. have a lot of velocity or speed on it, so she was able to get a good good platform on it. That ball drifts just out of bounds by Formico. Has a fairly well-known cousin in volleyball circles, three-time Olympic gold medalist, Carrie Walsh. Oh, she's pretty good. Pretty good, and a bronze medal at the last Olympics. Can't forget that. Another service error. Let's look at the numbers in keeping track of that. Both teams now with three service errors. Yeah, and, and the tough thing about that, Miss, is you've got a really tough front line for Texas right now. Three really good hitters. You want to take advantage of them at the net while you're serving. Well, back and forth we go, but Stanford's got the margin for error. 23 to 15. Stanford got out to a quick 7-3 lead. Texas was forced to call a timeout. And they extended that lead to 17-10. And now Morgan Eggleston and Texas trying to find some rhythm and some comfort to get back into this match. Down the line and out of bounds. Both coaches, I, I imagine Kevin Hambly was a little happier than Jared Elliott on Tuesday night, but both coaches said that they thought for teams ranked two and three in the country, BYU right now pretty much a consensus number one. It was a pretty sloppy match for teams of this caliber. Again, disappointing with the service yep, I mean, yep. especially with who you have on the front row. You've got three heavy arms up there that you need to get them the ball to score some points. And you're trying to find some feel. You're yep. trying to work your way into this match. You're trying to get this sellout crowd something to cheer about. Set point. White gets another swing. Stanford will track this down. And another block. That's been the story. Megan McClure, her passing, her attacking, and the blocking of the Stanford Cardinal. Six stuffed blocks for Catherine Plummer, the reigning national player of the year. And the Stanford Cardinal will close out number three, Texas, in the opening set of this best three out of five, 25 to 16 here in Austin. When bandits play championship in Columbus, Ohio, and it was Inki Ajanaku and four freshmen that ousted Texas for the national championship. It was the Stanford Cardinals' seventh overall title, tying Penn State. And then last year, met again in another crucial matchup, a regional final in Palo Alto. Stanford beat number six, Texas, to move on to their 21st national semifinal. Stanford won it. Three sets to none on their home floor. They eventually lost to Florida in the national semifinals with Nell Fortner up Paul Sunderland. Welcome back to Gregory Jim. It was all Stanford offensively and blocking. They hit 333. They outblocked Texas 6-1. to one. And one of the biggest concerns for Texas was their ability to receive serve. The numbers show that they were better than Stanford receiving serve. Well, you're right, and that's that's going to be frustrating for the coaching staff. But I'm going to step out there and say this right now. Texas has a full house here in Gregory Gym. They've got to show a little fire in their belly right now because I didn't see it in the first set. You want to you get these fans into the game, you've got to get yourself into the game right now. Too many unforced errors, especially behind the service line at in inopportune times. But Texas has to get a little fire in them right now in order to compete with Stanford. Jenna Gabriel will start things off. The freshman out of Honolulu, Hawaii for the Longhorns. Good play by Butler to keep the ball alive. Boy, it is hard to put the ball to the floor against the Stanford Cardinal team. Good read by Gabriel. Plummer through the block and down. Dig to kill ratio, and right now Stanford way ahead in that particular phase of the game. If you give 
Catherine Plummer a gap in the block, and she's going to take advantage of it. She goes right past. There's a gap, but she goes right past Breon Butler right there. She's just such a smart hitter with placing her shots. Plummer now with half a dozen kills on 12 swings. One-on-one -on -one to Catherine Plummer, just put the point on the board. She's just too smart of a player right here, but Stanford, again, digging balls. So you can see how hard she hits the ball. Yeah, look, look, people, she's 6'6", six, with a rocket hammer torpedo arm. Say it however you want to say it, but you got to put two blockers in front of her. Stud missile, if you will. Logan Eggleston, we haven't called her number much. She had seven kills on 23 swings. The outstanding 17-year-old freshman out of Brentwood, Tennessee. that Texas needs Eccleston to really wake up over there and get that arm going because she has the potential to really hammer the ball home. Plummer again high through the seam of Breon Butler. Catherine Plummer again the reigning national player of the year at six foot six. Adriana Fitzmorris also at six foot six. And then you look at Micaiah White and Logan Eggleston. Fitzmorris played in the middle last year and she has very comfortably made the transition to the right side. Very, very effective on Tuesday night. Her numbers were outstanding for Stanford in their three sets to none win. And Fitzmorris right on cue, 11 kills on 21 swings, hit 476. Yeah, she's just as impressive on the, on the right pin. So now you've got Plummer, Fitzmorris. That's a really tough order for a blocking team to have to, to try to shut down. Kaya White is passing the ball very well right now. And Breon Butler is slicing off angles that few others can even contemplate. Yeah, absolutely. So needed right now by Texas. Give the beast the ball right here. But I love what Stanford's strategy is. You've got Jenna Gray serving when you've got Plummer and Fitzmorris on both pins. Fitzmorris again to the outside, Jenna Gray with a perfect choice. And right now, you know, it's a good sign for Breon Butler that she leads Texas in kills. But as a team, you can't survive off of that. You need your outsides to start putting some balls away. Yeah, too many balls going to those pins. They've got to be able to come up with points. They've got to score points out there. Okay, right. Only two of ten. Yasmin Bedart, I need two of nine. Eggleston is two of seven. So they're six of 26 right now are the pin hitters, both right and left side for Texas. That will not get it done. It's Morris again. Well, Stanford is putting on a passing show right now. Everything right on target now, right in the three zone. You're right, and, and that leads to them putting on a hitting show because right now both pins are virtually unstoppable with this Texas block. They've got to find a way to get, get up to the hitters quicker. The guard on me again. Yasmin Bedard Ani did not start on Tuesday night. Came off the bench, seven kills on 10 swings. Now we know Yazzie has an arm. She's going to let it rip. Oh, beautiful shot. A little seam in the block right there. She finds it and puts it down. This is where Texas has to feed off of that type of swing and start putting some points on the board. What a cover by Hintz. Set to the outside, the ball hit outside and off the antenna. So that will be point and possession to Kate Formico and the Stanford Cardinals. Well, just an unfortunate miss hit by Micaiah White. Texas worked hard to get the ball out there to her. She's got to be able to take advantage of the outside arms of that Stanford block. Both teams passing the ball pretty well. Look at that dig right on target. 
Plummer off the top of the Texas block and out of bounds. Plummer now with nine kills on 15 swings. She, she's so impressive because she can hit anywhere along the front row and anywhere along the back row. Stanford already up one set to none, leading 8-4 here in the second. Timeout, Texas. It's time to rewind with head coach Tom Herman. When we do play our A game, we can beat anybody in the country. Because of how hard we played, the tenacity, the toughness, the physicality really kept us in that game. He's playing at a very high level for us right now. I think it really fires up the rest of the guys around us. If we play with that kind of passion each and every week, we're going to have a chance to win a bunch of ball games. I'll be bringing my own tonight. Nothing's going to stop me now. This whole place is going to be mine. I'm going to run this song. Network presents the Text Men. Welcome back once again to Texas Volleyball, presented by Wells Fargo, a sold-out Gregory Gymnasium, not a ticket to be had after all the tickets were scooped up by Monday, and it has been all Stanford so far. Really good dig by Micaiah White, hence there with a the pokey. Set tight to the outside. McClure will tip over the top of the block. And Texas finally puts the ball to the floor. You know, maybe that play will give Micaiah White some confidence, but she has to go up and swing hard. The tip, Stanford has the tip covered. I don't care where you're going to put it. They've got that covered. You've got to swing hard and make plays right now. That ball served out of bounds, and exactly to your point, Nell, right now, Stanford is able to put the ball to the floor. They are 20 of 45 kills to total attempts, whereas Texas is 12 of 46. Texas just can't terminate the ball. Well, and they can't get gunshot because of that. They have to keep going at it. What a dig by Peterson. Both teams groveling at the defensive end. That's a great dig by Peterson right here, and she gets the ball up right to Ashley Shook, who nails it to the outside to Eggleston. And those are the type of plays that Texas has to be able to take advantage of. Boy, Peterson, just a freshman, really has done a nice job in this her freshman campaign. Both teams passing the ball exceptionally and a really smart shot by the freshman Campbell again from right here in Austin, number three in black. She'll head to the sideline on the slide, deflecting the ball off the outside blocker of Texas. Yeah, it's not poor passing at all for Texas. They're, they've got to be able to really put the hammer on the ball and put it away. That ball drifts just out of bounds by Wilson, a six foot sophomore out of Toronto, Canada, misses it long. Yasmin Bedard Ani will come back on, replacing Claire Hahn as Ashley Shook will go back to serve. Shook, the 6'1 sophomore out of Plainfield, Illinois, an honorable mention All America last year. 10 7 Stanford. If you're just joining us. Stanford won the opening set 25 to 16. 
Service errors were a huge story on Tuesday night. 14 service errors at Palo Alto. Only four aces and already on the match so far. Service errors, that's six for each team. Three of those coming from Ashley Shook. Look at Morgan Hentz. Yasmin Bedard Ani able to cut that ball just into the middle of the court and register a kill for Texas. You know, Yazzie's a player that she's got so much volleyball IQ, really nice swing right there. You don't see Morgan Hentz miss a lot of balls. But Yazzie right now, the experienced senior on the floor, and you know she's hungry to get a win over Stanford. And another ball served out of bounds. That's number seven in the crowd, getting a little antsy. Well, and it's just, you look at Texas, they just shoot themselves in the foot when they have such a lineup along the net right now to do some damage offensively, but they just can't get the, keep the ball in on the serve. Good cover by Peterson. Quickly to the outside, and McClure, a rare, unforced error. And what makes matters worse as far as the Texas serving, because, because they cannot terminate, all of those missed serves are much more valuable. You've worked so hard to get the ball back. Yeah. A touch was called on the swing by McClure, and head coach Jared Elliott is going to challenge whether or not there was a touch on the block. Jared Elliott is saying there was no touch. You can challenge in or out or touch. Service line foot fault, three meter line foot fault, net touch violation, ball off of a player, either at the net or in the backcourt, whether or not the ball was up or down, or four contacts. The call on the floor was touch Texas. Was it a net touch or a hand? Which, what? They're both the same. Okay. You, you ball in or out or touch is now combined as a challenge, not net touch. Gotcha. Ball in or out or did the ball go off a blocker? It was ruled a touch against Texas. Yeah, I'm not sure I saw one on that play right there. Well, this is the hardest challenge yeah. because it's, it's not 120 frames per second and it's not high def, so yeah. it's hard to tell. And it has to be irrefutable. So yep, right now, yep. the call is that there was a touch. So Texas trying to get that turned over. i tell you what, it's a great look at Breon Butler getting up over the net and pressing forward. That's beautiful. And this is where she's going to improve so much in her game. Butler being able to laterally move along that net. And she turns into that dynamic blocker. The challenge is successful. It was ruled no touch. That's good work by the officials. I think that it was absolutely conclusive that there was no touch. And so that's a big two-point switch. Instead of 13-8, Texas back in contact at 12-9 until they serve the ball out of bounds. Wow. Wow. I probably sound like a broken record, so I'm sorry for all you people out there having to listen to me, but it's the inopportune times that Texas misses the serve. You know, sometimes you can absorb it. It's hard to absorb it when you challenge and win. But right on me again. Yeah, one step forward, two, two steps step back. back. Right. Now you've got Yazzie subbing out, so you don't have her arm on the, along the net right now. She's been a consistent swing. Claire Hahn on to serve and play back row for the senior Bedard on eight. Look at Megan McClure. Last year again played a smaller role offensively, but boy, has she really stepped up, hitting almost 300 on the year. This is what's so impressive about Jenna Gray is how she gets to the ball so quick, gets her feet set. That pass was a two, but she got under it and got it out to one of her primary hitters. Nice dig by Formico. Plummer out of the backcourt, changing pace and slicing off in front of Claire Hahn. Yeah, Jenna Gray 
Got quite the resume, a first-team All-American in volleyball, and also placed second tra NCAA track and field championships in the javelin. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Ball set way too tight. Hints is all over that, sprawling on the floor. Timing on the slide has not been there all night for Texas. Catherine Plummer misses it out of bounds. A break for Texas, making it 15-11. Yeah, the break they worked hard for right there. They kept the ball alive long enough to, for Stanford to make the mistake. They want to be they want to be the ones putting the ball down right now. So Texas has need to do a better job with terminating the ball. Okay, a white perfect example. Three of 21. But Ardani leading the way with five kills. Plummer leading all attackers with ten. Another service error as the crowd moans. That's eight service errors right now for Texas. Remember, in the three sets played in Palo Alto, they had 14 service errors. You know, and you're saying, well, wait a minute. Why are you guys all over Texas for missing because, and Stanford's missing? It's not equal because Stanford is siding out. Stanford is putting the ball to the floor. It's easier for them to get possession. Texas is really struggling to get possession of the ball, and then they're just giving it away oftentimes. And they do again. All service errors are not equal. Yeah, and that's, it, it, it might take you a while if you're a, a, a person watching this on TV to understand that, but it really, you've got to sit with that one for a little while to understand it because it makes total sense. And it's contagious. Texas has missed six out of their last eight serves. Breon Butler, Kevin Hambly just watched that kill, turn around and looked at his assistant and said, we, have, we don't have an answer for that. Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest compliments Breon Butler I've heard get this year was from Kevin Hambly. And that, that, I mean, they were incredibly impressed with her in the past. Look at, uh, in front wow. of the three-meter line. I know I was calling it the 10-meter line. That'd be incredible. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just amazing what this athlete is able to do. Seven out of the last nine serves have been missed by Texas. And getting back to the point I made in the opening set, Stanford scores 19 and a half points yeah. on their own side of the net. Texas is just giving them free points. Oh my gosh, <laughs> free points! Boy, this is uh, this is getting a little ugly. But but again, the, uh, not all misses are equal because Stanford's still up 18-14. Well, because Stanford is hitting 309 and Texas is hitting 169, they're able to terminate. A Bronx cheer on that ball serve. Nice dig by Peterson. And right to the floor, Temi Alade and a really good read by Jenna Gray, recognizing the one-on-one. -on -one. Alade's had a pretty nice match tonight. Some really nice kills right here, but this is a player that's really grown as a middle blocker. But Paul, let's talk about Sidney Peterson for just a minute, because this kid is keeping some balls alive for Texas in the back row. That one just missed out of bounds by Breon Butler. I'll tell you, I like the choice. Why not go back to Butler? Yeah. If the pass is there, Butler's there. Absolutely. And Stanford's struggling to really make plays on her balls. Texas has got to get something going on the outside. We'll give you the totals in just a minute. Right side to the dog on me. Mikhail White is 3 of 21. Eggleston is 3 of 9. So that's 6 of 30. And now Bedard Ani is, is 6 of 15. So 12 for 45 by the pin hitters for Texas. Yeah, points can be scored right here for Texas. You've got three across the line. That's off the face of one of the blockers. Okay, 12 for 45 now. Those are the numbers, black and white, but why? Why is Texas so inefficient right now on the pins? Well, right now, the block for Stanford has been pretty stout. And that's, I mean, that's something that Texas has to figure out as this match continues. Good swing by Bedard on me. Texas and Ashley Shook have found a hot hand. Well, Yaz, he's figured it out. I mean, she's, this is the heavy arm player right here for Texas. 
They need her on the front row for six rotations, but but uh, Yazzie right now, her numbers might not be that high, but she seems to be getting stronger and stronger, more confident right now against the Stanford block. Yeah, Bedard on need, hitting 312. Seven kills, 16 swings. Both teams passing the ball exceptionally well. Campbell with a quick kill out of the middle. Jim Gray is slicing up the Texas block right now. How many times have we seen Jenna Gray literally not have to move to go get the pass? She has a lot of options right now within this offense. I think serving practice will be at the head of the list of things to do when Stanford gets back to Palo Alto and when Texas gets back in the practice gym. Stanford leading one set to none and 22-17 here in the second. Stanford ranked number two at seven and one. They're only lost to BYU. That was in Provo, Texas at 5-2, and two, lost to Stanford on Tuesday and at Wisconsin. Eggleston misses that ball out of bounds. Just like the opening set, Stanford went out to the quick early lead, 4-1 here in the second, and then 8-4, and are now just two points away from taking a commanding lead. Eggleston, that's a double contact. Yeah, yeah. Steve Robb, one of the best officials, saw that a little bit late. Double contact called against Eggleston, and now it will be seven set points for Stanford. Yeah, just an unfortunate misread by Eggleston right there. Maybe a little youth, maybe a little nerves. Eggleston able to put the ball to the floor away from Hentz. A much needed kill for Eggleston. And we talk about how important this match is, particularly to Texas, because, okay, it's the middle of September, but regionals are not assigned, they're earned. And if Texas falls to five and three in the non-conference, it really can't do a lot of work in the RPI with respect to the Big 12. They may be out of the running for a regional Final Four spot already before they start conference play. Beautiful play in serve reception. Holly Campbell, the 6'4 freshman with the kill in Stanford. Up easily, two sets to none over number three, Texas. I mentioned that Jenna Gray was not only an outstanding volleyball player, but a multi-sport athlete. Look at that, finished national runner-up in the javelin, 187 feet, 11 inches. Her teammate, Mackenzie Little, went 198 flat to make it a sweep for the Stanford Cardinal at the NCAA Championships. Uh, quite a one-two punch for the Stanford Cardinal. Man, that is impressive. You know, that's not an easy uh, skill, throwing the javelin. I mean, that's it takes a lot of technique to do that and, and strength. But this is a, obviously she's done that for many years and has uh, really honed that technique. You know, we were talking about perfect passes, the 3 2 1 and the percentage of perfect passes. Both teams have been exceptional, absolutely exceptional. Texas in the first set passed 2.6. Yeah. That's one of their best marks on the year. In the second, they dropped a little bit to 2.5. Stanford has been a little bit more, excuse me, they even went up in the second yeah. set to Texas. Stanford has been dead, dead even. Both of them, perfect pass percentage in the 80s. Passing has not been the issue here. It's been Texas's inability to put the ball to the floor and serve the ball in the court with some degree of difficulty. Yasmin Bedard on eight. They certainly found something at the offensive end now with eight kills on 17 swings. Yeah, Yazzie's showing her experience right now and really her will to win. And, and this is where you've got to go up, make plays in the ball, and finish plays out. I'm looking at a number for the Stanford Cardinal you rarely see. I'll get to that after this play. Served by Claire Hahn here for Texas. to Plummer again, and she missed it inside the block. Stanford was a perfect 19 for 19 siding out against Texas in the second set. 19 yeah. for 19. I don't know if I, I don't think I've seen that number. At least I haven't this year, I know. 
75% is really good. Good block out in the middle. We haven't said that very many times for Texas. Just their second stuff block this time by Butler. Well, great job by Texas being there and ready. There's no hitter on the right side for Stanford, so that block can really load up for Texas, taking that shot away from Holiday. Really good. Alade. Really good help that time by Mikaia White. Texas out to the quick early lead. And that's going to be a net violation either on Shook or Butler, and Stanford is on the board. Stanford has won the national championship on seven occasions, most recently in 2016. Four were won under the leadership of Don Shaw, three under John Dunning, who retired two years ago after winning the national championship. Team led by Inky Ajanaku. That's a way to go out on top yep, right yep, there, yep. isn't it? And he's now joined us at ESPN and will be working with us on our coverage all season long. Good swing by White. And that's the kind of swing you want to see coming from Micaiah White. She has a rocket of an arm when she can unload on it. She does a great job of cutting the corner right there, going right past the outside arms of Alade. Nakea White so far on the year, the returning All-American. She was second team as a freshman, third team last year, averaging just about three and a half kills per set. And another miss serve. They are really adding up. That is 12 miss serves now for White, Shook, and the Texas Longhorns. Nakea White offensively right now, just four of 23. has passed the ball exceptionally well. Leading to kills by Butler. And that's what happens when you pass the ball well and you've got Butler in the middle. You can feed the beast right here. Butler does a good job of showing herself, gets up on top of the ball and puts it away. Triple B, beast, Breon Butler. <laughs> it fits. She is a magnificent, magnificent athlete. White nicely out of the back row. That's a that's a part of Texas's game we haven't seen a lot of this year. Is that setting that back row attacker? And there's White doing a good job of getting the hands of Adriana Fitzmorris and out of bounds. And Texas has to take advantage of this momentum. What a pass! And Fitzmorris off the hands of the block and out of bounds. Back to Micaiah White. She's been struggling offensively, but this is the best ball control that I have seen from her against an elite serving team in her career. Her ball control has been exceptional. Well, so many service errors by both of these teams. That's 22 combined. That was the 10th for Stanford. And you see how that's really detrimental to Stanford. It gives Texas the four-point lead. It stops Stanford, um, Stanford's momentum. Nice dig by Peterson. Blummer that time off of Morgan Johnson. I tell you, Sydney Peterson, a freshman, is not afraid. She plants herself down the line, and she knows she's going to get it. They gave the line to Fitzmorris Peterson right there on top of it. Again, it's dig to kill. That was an absolutely perfect dig, yet Texas did not get a really dynamic swing in the offensive transition. Stuff blocked that time by Campbell. Yeah, really nice job by Campbell getting over again. This is a freshman who's really come in. Teaming up right there with Jenna Gray. Really, Jenna Gray gets the gets her hands all over that block. Stanford comes in awfully hot, as you might imagine, but look at consecutive wins, three sets to none over number five, Penn State. Three sets to one over number one, then number one, Minnesota, and then three sets to none over Texas on Tuesday. Morgan Johnson out of the middle. You know, Texas has been pretty successful today out of the middle, passing well when they get the ball to that middle hitter. They've had, they've had some nice success. 
Breon Butler is five of seven. Morgan Johnson now two of nine. That's got to get better, but I agree with you, especially as well as Texas has been passing. Catherine Plummer has been in double digits for a while, now with 13 kills on 24 swings. You know, Paul, it served pass today, and, and, and being on the floor with Plummer and Fitzmorris, right? It's, it's amazing how tall they are, how just beautiful athletes that absolutely are so powerful, but to be right there, hear the, how hard the ball is hit, and watch them move. They're impressive. Another perfect pass by Sidney Peterson. Right there, able to take advantage of the middle hitter, Morgan Johnson, for the point. Sidney Peterson doing work yeah. tonight for, for Texas. I tell you, this freshman out of right here in Austin, Texas, Holly Campbell, at six foot four, played with the U.S. Youth National Team, has been really, really impressive. Campbell now seven kills on 11 swings. Yeah, Westlake High School. This is a, a player for Austin to be proud of right now. She's playing in Mount Palo Alto, and again on that slide set, if you're going up against one block, that high probability that you're going to get the kill. Advantage yeah. offense. Talking about Sydney Peterson doing work. She's received 12 serves along with that. Make it 13. 10 perfect passes. 10 perfect passes. Did you count that one right I did, there? I did. Okay. I, I can add I can add nine. Okay. <laughs> because here's another perfect pass right there. Sets up Breon Butler, who sends it home. Texas but, hitting 211 for the match, but they're seven of ten right now here in the third. Must win situation for Texas. Alade tipping away into the open area from Peterson. Nice read for the senior out of Canada. Yeah, she places it right where Texas has no shot at getting that. That's a beautiful read right there. You know, and unfortunate for Texas, Claire Hahn comes up with a big save on a second ball over by Jenna Gray, but yet again, Texas not able don't to. Swing, right. Well, they don't have a back row attacker on the floor right now. Micaiah White was out of position because she was coming in to cover the tip. So that's a phase of the game where Texas has got to think about that. Do they leave Eggleston on the floor right. so they give themselves another option in transition? And you Texas have, always has, excuse me, no, yeah. go ahead. Well, you have to think that Texas in the future, in maybe conference play, we're going to see Eggleston on the back line getting that experience as a six, rota six rotation player. With Plummer and McClure both playing six rotation, Stanford always has a back row attacker available. Nice dig by Rounsiger. And Breon Butler able to throw the ball to the floor. That's a smart play. It is. Do you see her confidence is growing? She looks so much different than she did two weeks ago, or even in the orange and white scrimmage. She's just a much more confident player, goes right over the tip of the fingertips of the middle blockers. Uh, that was a triple block right there, by the way. Butler is doing some really special things athletically. That's no surprise, but she's doing some really smart things as an attacker. Yeah, you know, she has had all of last year as a red shirt to learn more about the game, to get up to speed at the speed for the speed of the collegiate game. She's had some international experience. This is a player that just has her whole future. She's just going to get better and better. She's pretty good right now. Butler now seven of nine in terms of attacking. The serving in this match has been just dreadful by both teams, yeah. but more so by Texas. Yeah, Butler, the number two recruit in that 2017 class, but redshirted last year, just needed a little bit of a late comer to the, the game of the sport of volleyball. So put in a lot of work last year and it's paid off for right now. Beautiful dig by Han. Can Texas transit? The answer is yes, they can. 
And it's good to see Eggleston getting involved with a good hard swing right here. Beautiful dig by Claire Hahn. Shook gets under it, sends it out to the outside, and a finish. And that's what we haven't seen Texas do. Finish plays, Eggleston did. For the first time so far in this match, Texas with a lead and the crowd involved. Texas Volleyball on Longhorn Network is presented by Wells Fargo. Established 1852, reestablished 2018. And in part by Toyota. Don't miss Toyota's tailgate event. Visit buyatoyota.com. It's time to rewind with head coach Tom Herman. When we do play our A game, we can beat anybody in the country. Because of how hard we played, the tenacity, the toughness, the physicality, really kept us in that game. He's playing at a very high level for us right now. I think it really fires up the rest of the guys around us. If we play with that kind of passion each and every week, we're going to have a chance to win a bunch of ball games. I'll be bringing my own tonight. Nothing's going to stop me now. This whole place is going to be mine. I'm going to run this town. Work presents the text man. Presented by Wells Fargo, a standing room only crowd as number two Stanford takes on number three Texas. Stanford won the opening set 25 16, won the second set 25 18. And going to that timeout, Nell, that was the first significant lead that the Texas Longhorns had had over the Stanford Cardinal. And the tough thing is, they came out of the timeout and missed their serve, so immediately Stanford cuts into that lead. Good touch on the block transition opportunity for Stanford. Fitzmorris missed it down the line. Adriana Fitzmorris has been pretty quiet, relatively speaking. Seven kills on 18 swings with a couple of errors. She had a big match on Tuesday night, leading the way to the Cardinal with three sets to none win. Shot. Nice read that time by Megan McClure. A big hole in the middle of that Texas defense right there. McClure reads it and goes over the hands and just puts it right where Texas cannot get it. There's such a discrepancy right now between the outside hitters of Texas and the outside hitters of McClure and Plummer for uh, Stanford. McClure and Plummer are 17 of 41, hitting 300. White and Eggleston are 10 of 41, hitting 146. That's just a huge differential. Look at that, another perfect pass right on target. Good block by White. And a better block that time. I think Yasmin Bedard on knee got it. 16-12 advantage for the Longhorns. Yeah, really nice job. Morgan Johnson holds right here. She sees it coming. But Yazzie gets over there and shuts the door on it. Fourth stuff block for Texas. Stanford leads the match with seven. Bummer kicking out of the back row that finds the top of the tape. So the momentum has definitely swung in Texas's way right now. Serving is of the utmost importance importance of at this point. Texas has 14 service errors matching Tuesday night. Zero aces. 
McClure again. What an outstanding job she is doing on the pin for Kevin Hambly and the Stanford Cardinals. Yeah, she just shows no fear right here and goes right at the Texas block. Just ping pongs its way through there and to the floor. That ball off the block and out of bounds. Nice swing, good rhythm. And once again, both teams are passing exceptionally well. Really well. Texas doing a better job finishing plays, though, in this third set. Peterson now 11 perfect passes on 14 attempts. Good touch off the block. And Hintz keeps it alive. Stanford. Dig to kill. What a magnificent effort by both teams. Rian Butler was there, but Ashley Shook just flat out missed her in the middle. Yeah, Remember that play. A bit of a head scratcher because Shook had plenty of time to put the ball just in the air for Butler to go get it. And Butler comes right back. I like that from Shook. I do too. Showing the confidence to go right back into the middle. Right, well, that wasn't Butler's fault in the play that she missed the I shot. The set wasn't up high enough for her, but right now she can go up and get the ball. Butler now with eight kills, matching the lead of Yasmin Bedart Ani. The left sides for Texas still to get untracked. A lot of slicing away from Mikaela White. Yeah, nice shot. We're seeing both Alade and Brown Butler being able to really cut the ball inside that three meter line. And that's that's impressive. That's not an easy skill right there. The set has to be good. You've got to be able to get around the blocker's arms. Here is Gray with that javelin arm. Yeah. Nice play. Good pass by Han and Mikaela White starting to heat it up a little bit. Well, you said it many times tonight, Paul. The passing by Texas has not been the problem. Shook does a good job getting under the ball, sending it outside, but that's where McKay White likes it. Give it to me inside a little bit and let me pound it. Right now with her seventh kill. Slam dunk by Ashley Shook. Momentum right now is definitely swung in the favor of the Longhorns. Shook goes up confidently and dumps it. Finishes the play, scores for Texas. Texas riding some momentum right now. They haven't, you haven't felt the energy in Gregory like you feel it right now in this third set. Texas, unlike the first couple of sets, got off to a good start. They led it 6-2 and now with a timeout by Stanford. Lead it 21 to 15. Well, we've got a moment. Let's take a look at the big picture around the country and BYU continues to roll. They beat Stanford, they beat USC, they beat a very good team in number 24 Utah and number 25 Marquette. And then Mel, talk to us about as, as conference play starts next week, how this lays out for teams in the Pac-12, the Big Ten, the Big 12, et cetera. Well, you're looking at the Pac-12 and the Big Ten, Paul, that they've got seven teams, six teams, respectively, in the top 25. So night in and night out, they're playing highly ranked RPI teams. So they have a chance to continue moving up towards the higher um, NCAA, you know, tournament scene. Texas, on the other hand, in the Big 12, you've got Baylor. And that that's hurts Texas in a way because they're the only other team that can that they can beat to help them with their RPI ranking. So right now, this match with Stanford, why is it so important? Because you're going to beat a good team. It's going to help you in your RPI. We're already talking about the NCAA tournament. Can you believe that? We haven't even started conference play yet. But that's why this match tonight is so important for Texas to win so they can have a shot at being a top four seed in the NCAA tournament. Well, we're not the only ones talking about the RPI yeah. in the non-conference. They're talking about it in Madison, Wisconsin, in Minneapolis. Yeah. They're talking about it all over the country. They were talking about it in Florida yeah. the first week of the season because well, the regional sites 
are not predetermined like they used to be, and they are in other sports like basketball. The top four seeds host their first four rounds of the tournament. Yep, so it makes the first two weeks of the regular of the non conference season incredibly important. Coming out of the timeout, number six in black, Tammy Alade, one of five returning All Americans for the Stanford Cardinal team. With a kill out of the middle is Catherine Plummer, who's cooled off a little bit. She hits over 300 on the year. She's now 13 of 28. She's been blocked or hit out of bounds five times, 286 efficiency. Yeah. Kevin Hanley has to be pleased with what he's seeing out of his middle tonight. Both of them over 400. Boy, that was not a good set to the outside by Shook. That ball drifted about eight feet off the net, and Eggleston could just risk that ball into the court. And what happens? Stanford, perfect dig right up to Jenna Gray, and they put it away. Dig to kill ratio right now for Stanford. Texas got to get out of this rotation. They've had a fairly comfortable lead throughout the course of this set. Oh, lucky play. Eggleston able to get that ball inside the Stanford block and a, and a very wry smile from head coach Jared Elliott. Hey, take it any way you can get it. That would just pin balls home right now, right off the net and right inside the Stanford block. Look at that pass by McClure. And Jenna Gray is going to Alade on perfect pass every time because Texas is not helping out on this fine middle attacker who was limping around at practice this morning. She had all kind of kinesio tape on. Well, look at her hang in the air. She's at full extension right here. It's like she just slams the ball down. It's almost like she just throws it down. But Texas commits a net violation, so Stanford gets the point. What a dig by Hoots. Big swing on the sideline by McClure and puts the ball away once again. D to K ratio. Yeah. And Texas might need a timeout. And, and Morgan Hintz, again, one of the best Libros in the country right here. She, look at her. She's coming to get the ball. She knows exactly where it's going. That's what makes her so special. 20 digs for Hintz already. Right side inside the block that time of Morgan Johnson and now certainly Texas will call a timeout as their four point lead is now down to two at 22 20 timeout called by Texas. Look this is gut check time right now for Texas. This is their time. This is their timeout. They're up two, and you know how fast those points go in the 20s. But this is gut check time for the Longhorns to hold on to this lead. So for Texas, what are the first, what are the primary things they're talking about during this timeout? Well, I'm going to tell you something. I, I'm not sure right now. I'm going to tell you what they need to be talking about. Last time they called a timeout, they came out and missed the serve. So Texas has to at least come out of this timeout. And when they get the serve, they've got to be able to knock down serves in this time period. And if Texas has the opportunity, they ought to get the ball to one six foot four redshirt freshman. Brianne Butler when she gets back in the match. You look at her numbers so far on the night, eight of 10, hitting 700 efficiency. That, that ball right there, absolutely beautiful. The connection with Shook will just continue to get better between these two, but you know, with those long arms, you just have to put it in an area of the window. Just put it in an area of it and let her go get it. The higher, the better for Brian Butler and not so good for the block because she can go over the block. We'll take a very close look at the options for Ashley Shook in Texas when they come back out of the floor. Morgan Johnson up front. So they're in a two hitter rotation. They do have Micaiah White still on the floor available as a back row attacker. 5-1 run following the Stanford timeout. Look at that. Look at that. It's a testament to how good Texas has been for a long time. Perfect pass. Oh, nice play by Ashley Shook taking things into her own hands. You know, she can feel it. It's coming. It's right in the right spot for her. It comes right to her. She's going to have to jump set it anyway. She just goes right over. It's Stanford. Then get the block up. A lot of credit to Micaiah White for another perfect pass. It's Morris.
Again, you got your two seniors over here on this double block right here. Yazzie sets the edge, and you've got Morgan Johnson coming in and shutting the door right there. Four set points now for the Longhorns. McClure again. Dug by Eggleston, out of the back row to White. Texas doesn't get a swing. But what they do get is a stuff lock by number 12, Morgan Johnson. So Texas is on the board. Stanford cut the long professional career. Yeah, I saw him walking on campus today, Paul. He is very tall and very skinny. He's going to have to put some weight on. Just underway, fourth set. And that ball tipped out of bounds. Difference in the third set. Texas getting out to a quick start, but what about on the Stanford side? Stanford just really just kind of let up. It looked like their, their play wasn't as focused as it had been in the first two sets. Miss Serves really have really uh, reared its ugly head. Catherine Plummer registers a kill on the outside. That set win by the Texas Longhorns ended a streak of eight straight set losses to the Stanford Cardinal going back the last couple of years. Yeah, really nice, quicker set, a little bit lower trajectory. Catherine Plummer gets her feet to it quick and hammers it. Plummer now with 14 kills. You know, when we started talking about Breon Butler a little bit last year, but mostly at the beginning of this non-conference season, the Texas coaches were pretty conservative, thinking that she had so much to learn and it was going to take a while and be patient. Wow. Wow. Yeah. She has sped things up a little bit. Her learning curve is tremendous. You took, the, you took that right out of my mouth because that's worth watching this, her, how fast she is progressing at this point. Brian Butler looks outstanding. Nine kills on 11 swings, a couple of blocks, and a couple of digs. Unforced error there by Plummer in Texas, like in the third set, which is a must win situation. Off to a quick start. What a save by Jenna Gray. Jenna Gray, pretty good size at the setting position at 6 1. And a nice finish by Alade right here. And Jenna Gray, a lot of trust right here. Alade presents herself. That was a tough set. But this is a really good rotation for Stanford with the hitters she has on the front row and the tough serve she can deliver. There's the tough serve. First ace of the night. Had four aces on Tuesday. Once again, this is back-to-back -back matches between number two and number three, Stanford and Texas. Jenna Gray and the Cardinal won three sets to none on Tuesday. Remember Stanford sided out at 100% in the second set, yes. down to 62% in the third. Another tough serve. Right back to Alade. Well, you can kind of see where both teams are leaning right now. If the pass is going to be perfect right there in the middle of the floor. The middles are going to get the ball. Alade transitions back off the net and gets herself up and in position for a nice swing. Tammy Alade, the senior out of Alberta, Canada, does a good job of cross body and wrist away out of the middle. It's a tough matchup for the freshman, Brian Butler, who is way ahead of schedule offensively, but how much does she still have to learn blocking? Yeah, the, the blocking, I think, is just a technique thing. She's so athletic. She's just got to learn the dynamics of, of, that, of the block. When she's there and on a hitter, she's good. She can get up high, press in. But when she has to move, from pin to pin, a little bit more difficult. Back to Alade once again, who's streaking out of the middle. Alade now 11 kills on 16 swings, hitting over 600. And she is just being the workhorse right now. I mean, the, she's going to get the ball as long as she you know, transitions hard off the net and positions herself for the swing. Jenna Gray having a lot of confidence in her right now. Once again, Stanford comes in at 7-1, consecutive wins over Penn State, 
Minnesota and Texas. The Longhorns come in with a record of five and two. Plummer out of the back row. And into the corner. Maybe a challenge. There was a successful challenge early in the match. But that ball, oh, it's called out of bounds, ruled out of bounds by the first referee. Kevin Hamley's going to challenge. Yeah, you know what's interesting? I, I went, I looked at him right when the call was made. Okay, he he immediately walked over. He he thought it was in right when he took his first look at it. So he did not hesitate to go pick up the green card, indicating the challenge. Oh, that's, oh, that's going to be really close. Yeah, that's close. Challenge ball in or out or touch off the block. Three meter line violation. Foot fault on the serve. Remember. Any, it can be 99% yep. out, but if it's 1% in, it's in. And to me, to me, that's in. What about you now? Yeah, it looks in right there because you got to know that ball is flattened out on the surface, on the between the ball and the floor. That is a flat ball right there, right when it contacts the floor. So it spreads out. It hits the little piece of that line. Conclusive to you? Um, I don't know if that look is conclusive. I'd be interested to see what other look he's getting down there yeah but this to me this was the biggest thing Ham Hambly looked got right up to get the green card he he really felt like he saw that ball in and he was correct each team is allowed three challenges through the first four sets you're allowed one additional challenge if the match goes the distance I like this the show of respect right now yeah. Jared Elliott looked down to Kevin he went yeah it was good you know it was good. Stanford leading six to four here in the fourth. Look at Tammy Alade again. What are Alade's numbers here in the fourth set? She has just been on fire early. Now look how quick she transitions back and then comes right back to get the ball. I love how Jenna Gray is really using her just about on every ball Stanford's getting right now. Tammy Alade has got four kills so far here early in the fourth. Stanford leading seven to four. This tradition definitely started with the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich. Me and my friends always went to Whataburger. We started putting out flyers saying Whataburger Social, and it just started becoming a big thing. I'm all about the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich. It's got that barbecue flavor, that cheese melts on top. It's my go-to sandwich. My best memory was trying to get everybody in the pictures. One week it was 8, 15, 24, we got up to 65 people. This tradition's all about good food, fun, and the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich. Who do you turn to when an out-of-control driver leaves you with injuries so severe you have to learn how to walk all over again? When you can't take care of your family? Who do you need when your whole world is turned upside down? You need the best. See how St. David's helped put Rupelbot's life back together at stdavids.com. St. David's Healthcare. The best is here. Two elite programs going head to head for the second time this week. Stanford seven times a national champion. 21 times they've won the conference. Texas national champion on two occasions as well as an AIAW back in 1980. Breon Butler is 9 of 11. We'll give you what the rest of the Longhorns have done so far. Is that ball? Look at these numbers now. Breon Butler is 9 of 11. The rest of the team is 26 of 90 oh, with wow. 10 errors, hitting yeah. only 178. Breon Butler's hitting 727. Thanks, Brian. Great work. McClure 
Nice swing off the edge, taking some difficult swings this year. And a, another thing for Stanford, you know, Fitzmore is a little quiet there in the third set, and that's, you know, Texas takes that set. They, they've got to be able to, Stanford, to work both pins, yeah, not just Palmer. This is silent night for a player the level of Adriana Fitzmore, so I'll give you her numbers in just a moment. The returning two-time All-American, that ball is missed out of bounds. Fitz Morris, who was the offensive leader on Tuesday night when she was 11 of 21 so far tonight, just 8 of 24 with five errors, hitting just over 100. Yeah, really went silent in the third set. What a job Stanford has done on the Texas slot. That is their eighth stuff block. You know, what's interesting, you, you really have to focus on that. That has to be a, a big part of your game plan. We're going to stop the slide. You've got to be able to, to see how the setter positions themselves to get the slide set off. What a dig again by Hintz. Peterson returning the favor. And stuffed to the floor. This time by Holly Campbell, who's been very impressive along with some help from six foot six Adriana Fitzmorris on the outside. Stanford leading now 11-6. The, the ability for Stanford to keep the ball in play in a, in a very playable position starts with Morgan Hintz. There's no doubt about it. She gets to a lot of balls. She gets them up to Jenna Gray, but they're impressive in that regard. Service error there. That's been a big story, both sides. There have been 29 service errors so far in this match. Stanford has the only three aces. If you're just joining us, number two Stanford taking on number three Texas. Stanford won the opening two sets. Must win situation. Texas responded, winning the third 25-20. Confusion for Stanford. And again, out of the middle. Misconnection by Texas, and then Stanford gobbles that up, and Holly Campbell with a nice delivery from Gray. Timeout, Texas. Timeout called by Texas. The Longhorns trailing 12-7 here in the fourth. As the non-conference starts to wind down, Nell, you put together a list of the teams that you really like and why around the country. Yeah, and it's interesting. Like, we're, we're going to start with Wisconsin. Digs to end system. We've talked about that tonight. They're able to get to balls and then finish the play. That's so important. And Ronnie Jones Perry from BYU. Are you kidding me? What an arm she has. And everybody feeds off of that arm. And how about Stanford? Five All-Americans return. Are you kidding? What depth does this team have? And Nebraska is not scared of the brightest lights. Michaela Fecky leads the way. And how about Minnesota? That's Samantha Seliger Swenson. Sweet, soft hands to her hitters. And Texas, the elite outside power hitters on the pins. And they have to continue doing that and growing in that to give them a shot to win a national championship. The national semifinals and championship match this year will be in Minneapolis. You have, yeah, yeah, you have to think that Minnesota has just that extra bit of motivation to return home to try to win a national championship. Well, Minnesota is awfully good, even though they fell to Stanford three sets to one. We've seen Holly Campbell, the freshman for Stanford, right here in Austin. But Adonna Rollins is another player out of Texas who went to play for Hugh McCutcheon at Texas. Remember that name, yeah. Adonna Rollins, outstanding outside attacker to go along with Stephanie Samity for the Golden Gophers. Coming out of the timeout, Fitzmorris to serve. Stanford leading two sets to one in 12-7. A lot of great players come out of the state of Texas. Tremendous volleyball club system here. Enough to spread around this country. Running Morgan Johnson in front for the quick kill as Eggleston will go back to serve. Again, passing is good. Ashley Shook doing a good job of feeding her middles right there. One-on-one -on -one should give Texas or any middle blocker an advantage. Service error. Morgan Johnson has been quiet against the Stanford Cardinal. She was only 5 of 13 with three errors on Tuesday. And so far tonight, 4 of 16 because Stanford has done such a great job on the slide. 
Drips just out of bounds. Yeah, and for Morgan Johnson, that's one of her best shots, really, is the slide. She gets to it, she's got a great range with it. And usually it's been very deceptive for Texas's opponents, but not Stanford. Sometimes it's tough to hit against six foot six Catherine <laughs> Plummer. But Megan McClure has also done a wonderful job for the Cardinal against the slide out on the left side blocking. Service errors continue to add up. At least it's equal opportunity. 32 service errors, 16 for each team. Mikaela Wright, beneficiary of another perfect pass. Yeah, this is really interesting here because I think I was thinking, oh, it's going to Breon Butler right here because look, perfect pass. She's presenting herself, but look how she held the block right there, giving Mikaela White a one-on-one -on -one to easily put that ball away. Well underway here in the fourth. I'll give you the perfect pass numbers for both Stanford and Texas in the third. Plummer. Perfect dig by Peterson. Dug by Roundsville down the line. Stanford ahead in the point. They're going to get a quality swing again out to Plummer. Third time is the charm. Yeah, if you give Stanford that many swings, you have to think at some point one of those outside hitters are going to come through for you. And Catherine Plummer does that, gets it off of not a perfect pass by Formico right there, but Plummer, perfect swing. 16 kills on 36 swings. Tammy Alade, 12 of 17. Wouldn't it necessarily see that coming? And nice play by White. It's taking a while for Mikaela White and Logan Eggleston to get into the flow here. They're combined 14 of 45. Yeah, but go back to your point you just made. The size of the Stanford block, pretty intimidating. I mean, that's that's a lot to have to, to get through and pass. Eggleston is blocked by a lot of Stanford. Now, you played the game for a long time. You know that in college volleyball on the women's side, your left sides, because there's so many long rallies, must find a way to put the ball to the floor. You're right, and, and you're going to get a lot of swings to do that. And to me, it's got to be some really more hard swings than soft swings. Well, in the overpass, Alade with the tap down. Stanford extends their lead to half a dozen. Stanford already leading two sets to one. Looking to make it four wins in a row over Texas. 30th meeting all time. What a dig by him. She's going to need an ice bath after every match this year. That's going to be a lift call against Stanford and Alade. Again, Hens just finds ways to get to the ball, but she reads so incredibly well. That ball's coming at a fierce pace right there. She still gets to it. The floor is blocked. And this is where Texas, right now, they're creeping back into this. They're only down four. Really tough block. They're going to use this momentum and get that excitement about them right here. They're, they're hanging tough in this fourth set. Sixth stuff block for the long runs. I'll give you the Stanford total. Stanford with 10 stuff blocks. Fitz Morris on the outside with nine kills. Stanford hitting 283 on the match. Just about their average on the year, a little over 300. Texas is hitting 202, well below their season average at 295. Standing room only crowd here at Gregory Gym. Every ticket was sold for this match as a close of business on Monday. Texas does not get a swing and serve receive and Fitzmorris puts the ball away. Yeah, and that's that's got to be really frustrating for Jared Elliott because yes, it was an out of system play, 
but there was no play. You know, they, they, they got no kind of swing on the ball, and what does Stanford do? They take advantage of it and get the kill. Shank pass, service ace for Morgan Hintz. Fourth ace for Hintz and the Cardinal, and now they have a commanding lead here in the fourth. You know, Jared's got to be thinking about a timeout at this point. I'm not sure why Coach Elliott's waiting. You can't take him with you. Two hitter rotation. They do have Mikhail White available out of the back row. Good swing by Eggleston off the top of the block. Badly needed by Texas right there. Again, they've got some momentum. They've got to have some momentum right, right here. Get excited about what you're doing. Eggleston for the season, 2.8 sets kills per set. Tonight, only one and a half. Struggle has struggled a bit against the Stanford block. Especially in terms of efficiency. It's 261 on the year as compared to zero tonight. Just being reminded that Texas does have no timeouts remaining. So excuse me, Coach Elliott, they're taking them both. I'm sure he'd like to have three. Nash is shook and really struggling behind that service line along with Mikhail White. Ashley with four errors, Mikhail with six. That's an error that has to get cleaned up as Texas moves forward. Peyton Keith on for the first time. To serve and play some defense. Aaron Plummer is able to tuck the ball inside. Caitlin Keith, one of two twin daughters along with Michaela, the daughters of former basketball star and NBA star Adam Keith. I think he's here tonight. He is here tonight. Yeah. He is here tonight, married to former Stanford volleyball star Kristen Klein. Yeah. She played on the uh, in the Olympic Games in '96. Two daughters on scholarship to Stanford. Not, not life, bad. Life is good. <laughs> you know, when you read their bios uh, in in the Stanford's media guide, it, it's the whole family yeah. of people, aunts oh, and uncles Stanford. that have played it's at Stanford, who are it's Stanford, who are athletes, volleyball, basketball. Jimmy Klein played quarterback. Bob Klein, longtime tight end in the NFL. On and on and on. Quite a family. Megan McClure once again has been so effective throughout the course of the season and she has this puts out an effort to you the band-aid on her chin is getting smaller by the match yeah yeah she had a one-point landing and uh, did what every volleyball player has done split open her chin you know and she's not that big of a player but she's got a lot of power okay white probably a not enough and not early enough in this match, but White has had some success. This match has gone along. Now, her numbers are pretty good. 10 kills, but way too many swings to get there. Make it 11 kills on 36 swings. Stanford, two points away. And now, thanks to the kill by Plummer, just one point away. You know, it's such a hard hit ball that she that she swings. So even if you're there as a defensive player, it's coming at you at right, a right. mighty pace. Modern college volleyball, there are a lot of players around the country, six foot five, six foot six, six foot eight. But she has got a rocket of yeah. an arm. Nice swing by Bedard on eight. Yeah, didn't have enough of Yazzie really tonight at the net with the way she was swinging. Comes away with nine kills and on 20 attacks, hits a solid 300. But she has a heavy swing. She hits a very hard ball also on that right side. Oh, look at that. Texas with an opportunity. McClure jumped in the air. And so one match point is saved. Stanford will start conference play next week. Match point again. And tap to the floor by Tammy Alade. What a match the senior out of Canada had. Alade, 14 kills on 19 swings, hit almost 700 as the number two Stanford Cardinal make it two matches in a row. Three sets to none on Tuesday and three sets to one tonight before a sellout crowd here at Gregory Gymnasium. Stanford won the first couple of sets easily.
Texas was not going to go quietly. They won the third 25 20, but Stanford came back to win the fourth 25 18 and take home the victory behind Catherine Plummer, Plummer and Tammy Alade, along with others, three sets to one. Your thoughts, Nell? Really saw some nice play from the middles, uh, whether it was Alade, Breon Butler for Texas. We saw some tremendous athleticism right there, long length. The ability to get up, transition off the net, and get up and on top of balls. I thought that was really a fun part of this match to watch those both of those middles work. Obviously, both teams need to really do some work behind that service line. I think there's so many opportunities. Texas shot themselves in the foot in the first and second set, losing their momentum. And now time for the traditional eyes of Texas.